That was probably one of the worst races I've watched this year. Uh, pretty boring, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Singapore has traditionally never had a race without a safety car. This was the first one since we've raced here, I don't know, a really long time. Same strategy from the top 17 cars there anyway, um, and the last ones there were not really uh, part of any sort of real strategy. Uh, Norris comes out in front, 21 seconds ahead. Piastri, 41 seconds behind Verstappen. Russell, Leclerc, Hamilton, Sainz, Alonso, Hulkenberg, and Perez rounds off the top 10. Yeah, so let's just get into it. This is probably going to be a pretty short one. Uh, Norris, P1, uh, he broke the curse. So he actually has a conversion for his pole, and he didn't lose it on the first uh, lap. He get, had a really good getaway. There was nobody even close to him. And then he, after about lap four, he broke the DRS from Verstappen, maybe even earlier than that, and then continued to push up till... Uh, 29 seconds ahead, the sort of like 40 laps into the race. Uh, but that's not to say it was a clean race from Norris. He was driving pretty shit, to be perfectly honest. Again, he was very quick. I think the McLaren car is really to uh, to blame for his ultimate 20 second gap from Max. Uh, but Norris's racing was just kind of like bleh. This is lap 29, him coming into the corner, and like. Look at that, very nearly just binning it. Now this is Tech Pro, so you can actually hit that without too much happening to you. You can brush it a little bit, uh, but he ended up scraping the left of the wing there and he had a very close, you can see this just barely, whirp. so he made it move a little bit again. Tech Pro, you can have that. Uh, then he also had a brush with the wall around lap I don't know, say 44, 45, something like that. It, just after that, his pace started to drop off, I think because he realized that he was so far ahead, there was really no need to try to do that. He did put in a couple fastest laps near the end of the race uh, that got taken away from him, so he didn't get his grand slam. But a great drive from Norris. Not much you could say. He was out by himself all alone for most of the race. I want to say probably Oscar Piastri. As far as like uh, overtaking and drives go, for the entire race, Oscar Piastri's race was a lot stronger than Norris's and a lot stronger than, I would say, like, probably like 15 other drivers out there. Uh, he was the only one really to kind of be able to hold his tires aside from Norris. Mm, no, that's not entirely true. Leclerc did very well holding onto his tires as well. Some of the guys down further in the field did as well, but they were unhappy about it and their pace wasn't that good when they came back out. Oscar's uh, was able to do the overcut almost on the Mer Mercedes, but he just had 20 new lap tires on then uh, the Mercedes and passed both of them on track, which was in a weird spot uh, on the outside of a chicane corner. So kind of like trusting pretty heavily on the Mercedes. Red Bull, P2 and P10. Max did an excellent job, I think. Uh, I really thought that at the start of the race, if we didn't see a huge accident, which we didn't, uh, I was surprised by that, that he would just drop down the field, that the Ferraris and the Mercedes would overtake him because although most of the weekend the Mercedes and the Ferrari didn't look as good, uh, the Red Bulls looked appalling. I remember on Friday they were behind the RBs when it came to long distance pace and some of the quicker runs as well. So surprising that Max was able to hold on to it. And when I say surprising, not really though, he's an amazing driver, so. Did very well, uh, P10 for Checo. I don't know what to say about Checo. Uh, the speculation is always that he's going to be good at these street tracks and he made up some places, I guess, from, where did he start, P13 or something like that? Uh, it's not really enough in my opinion. It's, could he get more out of the car? He spent a long time behind the Haas. Like a long time. And there was he spent a long time behind called a Pinto as well. So we're talking about the Haas, a car which is kind of not anywhere near the Red Bull, even in its current state, and call a Pinto and a Williams, and a guy has only been racing for three races. You'd think he'd be able to get by those guys. I, I, Alonzo in a car that really is kind of like seventh, sixth best overall, depending on the track. I would have expected him to push up maybe into P eight or even seven maybe um well carlos didn't finish too far in front of him and ended up getting a lot more points so i, I don't know not much from checo personally honest uh and we saw daniel ricardo steal the fastest lap 
from Norris, and that is a pretty big deal as well. So we'll go into uh, that here in a second. I want to bring up uh, what that means for the championship. Now, it would have wouldn't have been that big of a deal, really. It didn't mean that much, but every one of those points is is worth it. Daniel looks like he had been talking to the press. I think it was the Portuguese press kind of a bit downtrodden and some of the questions they asked it really does seem like he is probably out uh christian horner was interviewed afterwards as well and said they would be making a decision you don't really say those kind of things unless you are going to i guess i don't know uh but he did do that final thing for red bull by taking that final point uh, at the last of the race and it was a good lap too like a very fast lap so this is the championship so far so again this is Racing 36 or Planet F1's uh, little uh, calculator for the year. So we put Max Verstappen. So this is a race where I said was very crucial. This is one of those last races where there's no real runoff or anything. Mistakes that can be had are zero. And you almost saw Norris lose it a couple times. Uh, but from Carlos Sainz, you could see how far Ferrari have fallen down. And that is pretty much their constructors and any sort of push towards beating Max in the championship as well. Orlando or anything like that because they finished so far down so they're they really are far behind now same with Oscar he's a little bit too far behind to catch Max and as of right now if Max finishes second in every race Norris wins every race and every sprint and gets the fastest lap in every race he ends up two points behind Max Verstappen. So it's official right now. Intervention needs to be done in order for Lando to win this at the end of the year. Uh, Max needs to have a DNF or needs to take penalty points for changing out engines, which is still in the cards. Remember, they lost that engine in Canada, so they're behind the, the curve. Will McLaren be able to take their engines to the end of the year without taking any penalty points? Uh, Mercedes recently has taken some of that. We still have six races to go. It's a long, long way to go. And some pretty difficult tracks, too, that are hard on the cars. Austin, very hot, is known to be able to destroy cars. We saw Alex Albon today take uh, some debris into his side pod and take some heat damage and have to retire the car. Only takes that. The only thing I will say is the danger for Max is higher. If he crashes out his car at all for the rest of the races, and really, I mean, smashes up his car like a rear end uh, shunt into a wall or a concrete barrier or something like that, and ends up damaging his PU, it'll be doubly bad. It'll be a DNF plus he'll probably have to take engine parts to replace that engine that he messed up. So uh, really kind of, he's in the danger, danger zone of any sort of DNFs. He'll have to take parts in order to replace PU elements, and that'll put him in a position where he'll take a DNF and uh, penalties for a, a race afterwards, potentially. So uh, he's kind of in a super danger zone, whereas Norris isn't, and that means Norris will be able to uh, be a little bit more loose when it comes to the rest of the races if he wants to uh, push it to max. Okay, so uh, Ferrari P7, P5, I think good recovery drive from both of them coming from P9, P10. We saw them get by people that we suspected they will. They lost out a little bit at the first, but were able to push through. Uh, very strong. I think Charles did very good holding on to his tires. Uh, and critically got ahead of Max Verstappen just before, just as he had pitted too. So not too much, too much to be said from them. They had a good race, although uh, I think they probably are will be a bit disappointed, but from the Saturday, not from the Sunday. Mercedes P4, P6, Oscar Piastri took that podium position from George and ended up getting by Lewis. Lewis lost though to Charles Leclerc as well, which I really didn't expect to see. I didn't think Charles would push up that far into the field. Tough race from both of them. Um, they looked pretty good at the start, although they started Lewis on soft tires. I guess they were just going for the probably going to have a safety car, so we'll put those tires on. Hope to get somebody in the first the first lap but uh nobody really stalled out it's such a short run down into t1 I don't, I don't know what they were thinking to be perfectly honest the only other guy to start on soft tires was i believe daniel ricardo which who was down in like 16th or something like that so very weird decision from mercedes there kind of going for some split strategy stuff but you remember if you split your strategy you're always going to get one of them wrong <laughs> that's kind of the way it is i don't necessarily feel that's the right decision uh, from them, just kind of screwing over Lewis. 
uh, and he really did suffer. He pitted really early and then fell down the order after that because he was on older tires than everybody else. Uh, but George didn't do that and still was passed by Oscar Piastri, so who knows? Um, maybe it wouldn't have made a difference anyway. I think he probably could have held off Leclerc if he had to put on mediums to start the day with. But you never know. It might have been a genius move if they had seen a safety car, but we didn't. Uh, this is Franco Colapinto going into T1. Uh, Albon was a little bit upset, but if you look at the the actual uh, helicopter view, I don't know what Albon was really complaining about. Takes to the inside there, passes three or four people going down. So you have the people going off track there. Albon ends up going off track, but they were really kind of like, I want to say two, maybe two and a half cars away from each other. Uh, Albon was pretty upset over the radio, but I, I didn't really see much interesting uh, thing from that. But uh, Carlo Pinto, great move into T1, and he didn't lock up at all. So he he had his, that means his prep lap was really, really good. Great move from him. Uh, great position from him. Too bad from Alex for uh, getting knocked out uh, due to cooling issues. But uh, I think, really, if we had seen anything, like if Norris had crashed, uh, you'd have seen points from uh, Carlo Pinto. So very interesting. Good to see him do that. Uh, this is from uh, me on uh, who uh, posted this mid-race. Uh, Perez saying that he is very good. Difficult to pass Carlo Pinto. You saw Perez not being able to get past. Now, uh, Perez is not a bad driver in any sort of way. He's just not as good as you would expect him to be in such a top team. But he couldn't get past, past Carlo Pinto. And that's pretty big praise uh, coming down the middle of the lap. And we're talking about a Red Bull versus Williams here in 2024. And Perez can't get by. Carlo Pinto is a lovely driver. And we have Nico Hulkenberg in P9. Again, taking home points. I believe that means he's into the top 10 now as far as championship points goes. Passes uh, uh, Lance Stroll, who was nowhere today again. So he's in the top 10 in a team which I don't really think is a P5 team. Well, let's, it's hard to say. I think it's really a toss-up now from Austin, uh, Martin, Williams, and Haas. I think they're all the, well, the ones in contention for that P5 kind of team speed anyone, any given weekend. So maybe he is, but I think he's getting a lot more out of the car than anybody else would expect to get. So great race from him. Great race from everybody, actually. is just a really, really boring. So we'll do a... a a race uh, fallout video, I believe. We definitely want to talk about um, some of the people who may not be with drives for the rest of the year. Uh, we want to talk about Kevin Magnuson, what, what he's going to do for the rest of the year. He was kind of, nobody's really talking about it because they're talking about Ricardo the most, but Kevin Magnuson is still sort of in the air right now. Uh, would you rather have Aldi Berman in the car? I would. We'll also talk about Ricardo. We will again talk about Perez, although I think he's locked in for the rest of the year. I don't particularly know why. And then we'll talk about, uh, we might see Audi actually uh, make a decision on their driver for 2025, and that would lock out the entire grid before the 2024 season is over, which is getting kind of near the ridiculousness. So there will be no silly season in the winter months in 2024 because everything will already be locked down. So we'll see what happens. We might move into uh, kind of stuff where 2026 is being announced in the uh, winter slash spring of 2025. But aside from that, uh, subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got it in a second, and I'll see you guys next time.